Good morning everybody, Silas back again today. I actually recorded a bunch of stuff yesterday, or I thought I recorded a bunch of stuff yesterday, but unfortunately my uh, GoPro had an SD card error and it had to be reformatted, so I lost all of that footage. Yesterday it was pouring down rain, I was absolutely soaked and freezing cold from head to toe, it was absolutely miserable, but we shipped out four loads of cars and then prices dropped after that, so we got them shipped out just in the nick of time. And when I say four loads, I actually mean like semi loads, not just on my trailer loads. They were big loads of cars that we shipped out. I also shipped in one trailer load that weighed about five tons, so just got as much out yesterday as we possibly could before prices dropped today, because they actually dropped today, the first thing this morning. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any of that footage or recover any of that, so don't have any of that, but I figured I'd just start over today and we'd see what we can get into. The only thing that's going on for sure today that has to get done is they are coming after those catalytic converters this afternoon at some point in time. I don't know the exact time, I just have to be there from 1 o'clock till 4.30, and they can show up at any point in time during that time. Last time I did this, uh, it was supposed to be between 1 and 4.30, they called me right before 4.30 and said they were running late and got there closer to 5. So we'll see what happens, but I'm here at the yard now, and it's completely flooded out back. It rained a ton yesterday, I mean a ton. Just absolute deluge. Definitely probably got more rain yesterday than we have the whole rest of the year combined. It rained so much that it actually flooded in here. I don't know if you can see, some of the water's dried up a little bit, but this whole area in here, this whole building filled up with water because the water running in, it got that deep. So unfortunately, the yard out back is just a solid mud pit. I'm not even gonna try to deal with that today, especially with prices being down now and I don't have any trucks coming, so there's no reason to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out to my place. Uh, it's really sandy soil out there, so I'm gonna be able to get something done at least. It just does not wanna quit raining. Just flat out pouring down rain. I was gonna go back there and work around the junkyard cabin, but I guess I'm not gonna do that now. I don't feel like getting cold. I was just gonna set all these outside and have them ready to go, but I really don't wanna do that in this rain, because if it rains in all these boxes and they get wet, they may fall apart. So I'm gonna wait till he gets here. That way I can just take him out of here and stick him straight in his trailer. So I guess until he gets here, I guess I'll maybe put some stuff on eBay. I don't know, maybe I'll edit some video on my phone. Not sure what I'll do yet, but I guess I'll find something to do. So I've been sitting here waiting all afternoon for about three hours, uh, actually about three and a half hours now. And they just called and said they're not going to make it today. So that was definitely nice of them. I blocked out the whole afternoon, canceled everything else going on just so I could sit out here and load these. And then they cancel on me. I said, so when are you going to be here? And he said, I'll be sometime tomorrow. And I said, well, what time tomorrow? And he said, I don't know. We'll have to see what time we get there. <laughs> I said, well, I don't work at that location. Usually I work at a different location. So I need to know when you're going to be there. And he says, we don't have a clue. We'll get there when we get there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go work like normal tomorrow. And when they show up wanting to get these, they can wait on me. I waited for three and a half hours on them. But hopefully they call and give me at least a little bit of warning before they show up. Because if they'll do that, that would be fantastic. That way I can quit what I'm doing over there and come over here. The really bad part about it is, is that I couldn't even do anything out back here just because it's pouring down rain still. That would have been really nice if I was out back and I could have been working on something out there and rearranging my junkyard cabin or, or doing something back there. But I just couldn't get it done because of the rain. It's supposed to be nice tomorrow though, so I guess we'll just see what we can get done at the yard. I'll see you in the morning. And good morning, we are back. It is still raining. Still raining. It was not supposed to rain today, but it's still raining. Prior to this, we were way below typical rainfall levels for this time of year. And now in the last two and a half days, roughly, we've gotten five and a half inches of rain. So now we are above average for rainfall this year. So it has been an absolute drencher. Everything is flooded right now. Uh, the streets aren't really flooded just because it was a soaker rain. It rained nonstop for two and a half days. So I guess that's better than if it just poured down rain all at once because that's when streets go underwater and houses flood and we don't want that. But inside in here in the building, this thing flooded, I've got water everywhere. Luckily I have most of my stuff up on top of other things that can't get ruined by water. So it's not that bad in here, I guess, really. I mean, it looks bad, but it's not as bad as it seems. I'm waiting on a guy now. He should be here in just a minute. He's gonna buy this sign from me. I threw it on Facebook Marketplace. That's where I sell most of my stuff is there and occasionally ebay it's a little bit rough but it's kind of neat double-sided he's coming to get that one for sure and then i've got i think four more down here i'll see if he's interested in buying all of them i listed it cheap just so he can take it and he can either keep it or resell it and make money i don't really care what he does with it i just want him out of here i did keep two of them for myself i'm gonna put these in the junkyard cabin this one here is single-sided but it's embossed everything's embossed on it the rest of these are just painted on flat and then that one there is in pretty good condition, so I figured those would be good for the junkyard cabin. He actually bought several signs for me, and now I've got another guy on the way to buy this old AMG supercharger. Pretty cool piece, worth a lot of money online, worth well over $1,000. I just don't feel like packaging it. I didn't realize how heavy it was when I pulled it off, or until I pulled it off. And I had another guy pull it for me, 
But then I went to pick it up. I said, man, I don't want to package that. It weighs a ton. So I don't want to sell it online. So I sold it for 300 bucks. And he can sell it online and make all the money and deal with all the packaging. And the AMG supercharger is gone. Headed to a new home. That's what he's going to do with it. He's just going to put it on eBay. And he can handle the whole palletizing it and shipping it and all that stuff. And that'll be a good chance for somebody else to make some money. I'm all for voluntarily redistributing the wealth. Because there are certain things that I just don't want to do. So I'll let somebody else do those things. There's other things other people don't want to do. So that's where I can make some money. So it all works out in the end that way. It's when I try to force it out of here, that's when I get a little bit antsy. What I want to do now is I want to put a few things on eBay while I'm up here and I got all of my stuff out. I want to do that and then I've got a pretty cool old truck coming, so I'm going to go check that out. There we go. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine of those throttle bodies off your late 80s, early 90s GM trucks mainly. There's some, I think there's some one, two, eight, and most of these are five O's and five sevens. Most of these are actually five sevens, but there is a couple five O's in there. But those always sell really good. So those are definitely good eBay things. I don't think I have any more off in this building at least. I've got a bunch more out back that I pulled off of cars, but these are ones here that I used to buy from a core buyer years ago that I've just had in here forever so they're finally done got pictures taken I'll put them on eBay here in just a little bit it is a mud pit out here everything's flooded it's actually not muddy it's just mainly water and this is really sandy soil within a day or two all this water will be gone that's probably my favorite thing about out here is it can pour down rain and you still won't get stuck other than not that hole there but that next hole that's a pretty deep one and it does get kind of slimy so you got to be careful going through that one just keep it moving There she is in her new temporary home I have not looked at this truck at all it was at an auction way out in western Kansas middle of nowhere I knew it was there my buddy Skyler was going anyway I said this is what I'll give for it see if you can buy it so he got it bought and brought it in for me he had to drive through some serious mud to get this thing out because all this rain we've been getting he bought a ton of stuff there though so he's been hauling that crazy mostly just scrap iron it looks pretty solid in here. Yeah, the floors have a little bit of pitting in them. But the kick panels have just a little bit of rust. There where the fenders bolt to them on the outside. The roof isn't rotted out. Still has the seat in it. All the dash parts are in it. They don't look too bad. The windshield trim is pretty good still, so it doesn't leak. What year is this truck? Is this a 47? Can't tell. I'm thinking this... Yeah, there's no... No gas tank in the cab. They have the gas tanks right there behind the cab. So yeah, this is a late 47 is what this is. Chevrolet Loadmaster. That's pretty cool. It's got some dents in the back of the cab, but it's not all rotted out. It's not all just completely mangled. Yeah, not too bad at all. I'm pretty happy with this one. It's got that crunch right there and the door's all messed up. Typical. Always happens on these trucks. still has the headlight rings and the chrome hood ornament and all that stuff on it 
that's a good premium quality nose right there I call those both of these do those sell for the big bucks I don't know what engines in it if it's being a 47 it's probably a 216 if I can get this open yep it's got the old Babbitt beater in it half the spark plug wires are off for some reason I'm not sure if it runs or not they said it did at the auction but they always say that but it does look pretty clean so as long as it still turns over and it doesn't have a cracked piston or something like that I bet it'll run firewall is good and clean still has paint on it so yeah I think somebody will buy this cab or I know somebody will buy this cab the nose will just wind up being wall art they always do on these big trucks just because they don't fit on a half ton chassis very well you can make these fit on something like an s10 but you have to shave the fenders off at the bottom and the front and they just they just don't look as good it's for people that do chassis swaps and things like that and then the wheel wheel is so big that 15 and 16 inch wheels don't look very good in there so nobody ever really wants these front clips but the cab's the same so somebody will buy that for sure and then on top of all that this thing weighs a ton it's very heavy that's a heavy steel tank on the back it's kind of a shame i'd keep it and use it except it's ripped out real bad here at the back and i don't feel like fixing it and i really don't need it that bad so i'll just go ahead and scrap it i really need to get busy selling some of these old truck cabs if i advertise them i know they'll sell both of those are pretty good cabs oh wait that other one that's right that's the one over there that somebody cut the back of the cab off of and welded another one on so that cab is probably just wall art but that cab will sell the cab off that old 52 back there will sell and the cab off this old 51 will sell this cab's actually sold once I get it off then I got the old 37 36 international whatever that was I had two different people wanting to buy it but nobody ever showed up on it I've had a lot of people interested in this truck over here I've got one guy wanting to come get some parts off of it but I just haven't had time to pull parts I barely have time to list the parts I already have off so for me to come out and actually pull parts is not impossible it seems like then I've got all this stuff here I need to get it cleaned out and lined up and advertised in other news I kind of have good news I got all these trees growing out here these are all locust trees in this area they have big old thorns on them and when I say thorns I mean thorns check these things out if you're not familiar with a locust tree look at these bad boys that's how big they are if I can get the thing to cooperate I mean they're huge they're as long as my thumb and there's some of them getting bigger than that and when they get hard in the fall those will go right through your boot and they'll go through tires too so my good news is is that I found a brush hog that will go on the front of the skid steer that will make short work of these things now it won't take down the big ones those over there and so what I'm gonna do is I'll come in here with the excavator and I'll rip those out with the excavator and there's that one great big one there in the middle it's kind of a neat tree but I hate these thorn trees with a passion so I'm gonna go ahead and take it out that way it's just gone and it'll stop spreading and then all through over there and then this little area right here are tons of elm trees coming up and I just don't even want them to get established I want to keep this area as a field so I'll come in here with that skid steer attachment once I get it and I'll be able to take all that stuff out plus I have areas like that back there that was a driveway that went around out back to another little area it's getting overgrown I'll be able to keep that mode I've got another path back there of course I can't get to it anyway but I can keep it mode just be so handy having that out here I could use that a ton so I'm really looking forward to getting that and I think it'll make pretty cool content to come out here with that and mow a bunch of these trees down anyway now I'm digging out this white Dodge right here this truck here I think is one year older or newer than the Dodge that my buddy Skyler just dropped off that truck he has one and he actually bought the axle shaft out of this a year ago year and a half ago something like that well then now his other axle shaft went bad or something like that I forget all the details but anyway he wants the other one out of this truck so I'm digging it out for him now luckily it's still here I almost crushed this truck and if prices wouldn't have dropped I would have crushed it but I want to dig it out for him set it out where he can get to it I got to thinking about it I got a bunch of junk inside that building and I have no clue when they're going to show up to get those converters so I think what I'll do is I'll set all the converters out then I'll set this van up in front of the barn and then I can take all the junk that's laying around on the floor of the barn and throw it in this van and try to clean it out a little bit then once it's full I'll go ahead and load it up on the trailer and take it to the claw that may not happen today but at least I'll have it ready to go for another day the sun came out it's nice out again now when I left for lunch it was cold and I had my coat on and on my way back out here the sun came out and now it's way warmer so this is much better working weather. I'm really liking this. What I'm gonna do now is I think I have the GoPro working. 
I want to mount it on top of the skid steer and I'm going to work on getting all those boxes of catalytic converters out for whenever the truck does get here. Then I'm going to take the van, shove it in the front door of the barn, and I'm going to pack it full. There we go, I got all the boxes set out, ready to go for whenever he shows up. I've got the van shoved in the door, and now I'm gonna kinda of clean up this area over here in front of me. And hopefully, hopefully this time, I know I've said this, and I've missed the last two auctions, but hopefully for the next antique auction on Big Iron, I'll be able to get my parts lined up on pallets. I've gotta clean all this area out here, and I'm gonna line all this with pallets and set vintage car parts on them. That way I can get my stuff in that auction and get rid of some stuff because I've got way more stuff than I could probably ever sell. Even if I just quit everything else I was doing and did eBay full time, I'd probably still be busy for the next 15 years. That's how much stuff I have. And I don't like packaging big stuff, so I'm going to take all of my big stuff and bulky stuff and things that I just don't want to list and I'm going to put it on pallets and liquidate it. Stuff like that AMG supercharger. Uh, I've got some steering, bunch of steering columns. I've got a bunch of steering columns. A bunch of them are valuable steering columns that are worth five and six hundred dollars. I just, I don't want to take the time. You have to pull them apart to be able to package them efficiently, and I just, I don't want to do it. I don't have anywhere to do it. I have to do it outside because I don't really have a building or anything like that. Even my garage at home, I don't really have room in there to do it. So I would much rather sell a five hundred dollar steering column for fifty or seventy five dollars to somebody else and let them make the money, let them do all the work, and I'll just work on packaging and selling the small stuff that's easy for me to deal with. Sometimes the stress just isn't worth the extra money. There's a little bit of trash in here that I didn't get out of here. I got this cabinet and it looks like some stuff underneath it right here. So if I have time, I'll make a quick trip to the landfill, but I'm sure it's an absolute mud pit out there. So I probably, honestly, probably won't do that. So what I'll probably do is like all this furniture type pieces. I'll take all those and set them aside. And I just want to get rid of everything. What I want to accomplish this afternoon is everything from those buckets of tar this way. I want to get rid of on those buckets of tar. I have no clue what I'm going to do with those. There's a bunch of them. The roofing tar, these are all full, and the landfill will only take five gallons at a time, period. You can't even pay them to take extra. They will only take five gallons at a time, but you can come an infinite number of times in a day. So I'm only a mile away from the landfill, so what I'll have to do is settle these out by the road and throw one in the back of my truck, drive over there real quick, throw it out, come back over here, grab another one, drive over there, throw it out. It's, it's super, super annoying, but that's what I'm gonna have to do. It looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, is that it? I don't know what's in the barrel, but that's more than five gallons anyway, but looks like 13 trips I'm gonna have to make to the landfill.
All I got left over here now is pretty much scrap metal other than this desk. Obviously that desk can't go in the scrap, but I'll have to wait till I have an empty dumpster to get rid of that. I'll put it down at the bottom. What I'll probably do is smash it in half with the loader and then throw it in there. But this can go in the iron. That table there is mostly steel, so it can go in the iron. It just has a wood top on it. All those there are empty. They can go in the junk. All this back here is metal, so it can go in the junk. That's a file cabinet. That's an old uh, metal bandsaw. That's all just iron. This over here is metal. And then I've got some more of these. I got rid of a bunch of them. A bunch of them were almost empty. So I went ahead and got rid of them and threw them in there. Uh, these here are all still pretty well full. So I'll only be able to get rid of those a couple at a time. This one here is liquid. I have no clue what's in there. So I'm going to open it up. And I guess we'll find out together what's in there. Well, I can't get the lid off of it, but it would help if a guy would actually read what it says on the thing. And it says acrylic white latex. I did not notice that because all I saw it from was from this side. I didn't see any labels, so I didn't know what it was. But that's paint is what that is. And it's still a liquid, so I cannot throw that in the dumpster because it will gush everywhere when they crush it in their trash truck. <laughs> that would be bad if they crushed that in their trash truck and made a gigantic mess and painted the side of their truck. But I'm going to go ahead and carry this back out front. Close these back up. There we go. They just emptied this today and it was only about a quarter of the way full is the bad thing. And now they won't empty it again for about two weeks. They empty it every other Thursday and today is Thursday that I'm filming this. So it'll be two weeks before it gets emptied again. But yeah, the next time I come in here, what I'll do is I'll focus on getting everything from here this way gone. The rest of the, like I said, this is mostly just metal. So then I'll come in here and sweep the floor, get it cleaned out. And then I can start lining up sections or section and areas off at least anyway, I mean. And that way I can start putting old parts in here as I have time. And then also, I'll work on finishing cleaning up that pile. I started on it, but there's a bunch of metal right here on the edge and automotive stuff that can go in a car. That van was full, so I'll wait till I have another empty truck or something to back in here and load all that up. I put the boxes back in here so they don't get rained on. And most people think that these are just boxes to put stuff in, but what these actually are is a spider farm. You put boxes like this, or any cardboard really, into a dark place like this. It's kind of not a lot of sunlight, but just a little bit of sunlight and not much moisture. And you can grow a lot of spiders that way. Now, obviously I'm joking, but these things will attract a ton of spiders. Brown recluses absolutely love cardboard. In my experience, the, uh, the only dangerous spiders around here anyway are brown recluses and black widows. And black widows love black stuff like uh, tires and batteries, things like that, plastic, rubber. So those are all over the cars. And then brown recluses love cardboard. So this pile of boxes, this whole building is probably clear full of brown recluses, I'm sure. So uh, what I may do is bring a bunch of those bug bombs that kill spiders in here. And they do work. I've used them at home before. They kill spiders. Now you have to get the ones that specifically kill spiders though. And just set off a bunch of those in here and maybe clear it out a little bit. I had to take care of a few other things. I had to talk to a few people. A guy drove out here and sold some converters to me. Of course he shows up a couple hours after I shipped all the converters out. So now i got three converters. But they're just aftermarket. So nobody's going to steal those. So I just threw them in the back of the truck. I'll take them by storage later. Then I filmed a promo. I had, it's my last promo. I don't have any more promos after that one to film. So hopefully somebody emails me and offers me another promo deal because uh, YouTube revenue is way, way down right now. All the advertisers are afraid of a recession and so they're not wanting to spend any money. So looking like it's going to get pretty tight. I have been selling quite a bit of stuff on eBay. About every day I've had to package one or two things. So that's what I'm doing now. I sold those hubcaps off of that uh, 66, I think they were a Chevy truck. So I got to get those out of here. That's the only thing that sold last night, but who knows what'll sell tonight. Usually stuff sells in the middle of the night. I don't know why that is. There's a set of six of them here. A couple of them are pretty nice. The rest of them are pretty rough, but I think I gave a hundred bucks for all of these plus a bunch of headlight rings. And I sold these for $155. So after eBay fees, I made about 40 bucks on these, which isn't a lot, but I still got all those headlight rings. And so it works out. I had a guy just call me. He saw a couple cars in one of my videos and he's interested in them. Possibly coming tomorrow to buy those. I don't know if he'll show up or not. Most people say they're interested and they never show up, but every now and then somebody does show up. So we'll see what happens there. I don't know what those converters are gonna be worth exactly. Like I say, they've got a process of stuff. I won't find out for about two weeks, but when I find out what they are worth, I'll be sure to let you guys know. But with that, I am done for the day. So I'm gonna head out. I'm gonna let you guys all go. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, give me a thumbs up. As always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. And remember to get out there and find an adventure. We'll see you next time.